Monday at the studio, except I'm not going in the studio today. That's right. Uh, it's it's actually it's my it's my hi everybody. It's my anniversary today. So we're gonna go for the day out. See, Kevin's in the truck. We're going to uh, maybe I'll keep it a surprise. I won't tell you. So you'll just have to wait and see. I'll share some of it. It probably is not gonna be pottery related. Nah. Who am I kidding? Everything's pottery related. So we're off for the day of adventure. Happy Tuesday. So normally, you know, weeks start on Monday, but yesterday was my anniversary. So we, I didn't work in the studio, uh, but today I am. So we have our good morning clay share. We set up the broadcast. We got new lights. Uh, I'll talk about those first. So we're always having to replace gear. That's just part of it. You know, we've been doing this for, well, it'll be seven years. Well, longer than seven because I started filming October before we launched Clay Share in June 15th, 2017. So I started October 2016 filming. So some of the gear, uh, you know, is like eight years old almost. But we're about to have our seventh birthday for the company. I'm pretty excited. So this is what I see when I'm, when I'm up here teaching we don't usually have the computer here but work surface and then all the lights and everything this is what i get all the cameras one camera one actually this is camera one this is camera two this is camera three and often we have camera four over there um, and then kevin has cameras in his production booth so there's a little bit about this part, we're getting ready to do Good Morning Clay Share actually in a few minutes. So anyhow, oh wait, the new lights, there they are, look at them. Aren't those great? These are the new ones. One, two, three, right there, that one. And then these are the lights they replaced, which we put up here. Oh, maybe we got new ones there too. Those look brand new, so I don't know. I uh, used to take care of all the gear and everything, but I've stepped back from that over the last couple of years and Kevin does all the gear maintenance and inventory and all that stuff. So, um, that's one thing that's really exciting. New lights. Yay. So everything's brighter. And then I'm working on, uh, some glazes that are in my secret glaze book. You can't see what's in there. Wait, you want to peek? Peek, 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 peek at glaze. Oh, uh, nope. That's it. You can't see. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working on some new glaze uh, colors and stuff. So that's happening. And then here's a little bit of what happens when you do glaze testing. Yeah, I know. These are not happening right now. Those might be next spring. But that color right there is, oh, it's, it's so nice. Anyhow, these are possibly next spring lighter baby colors. We'll talk about those later. Um, right now, um, I don't think I'm going to do a red. I think those are out. I am just think I'm done with that. I think I'm going to go more for like a burgundy, not a red. I, I'm not sure. But I'm really into a stable olive green that can be the same every time. And I felt like these were a little too blue in the back. Getting closer here at the front. This one's a little too dark on that one there. I, But I don't know. This one, I kind of love this one right here. It's dark but it's more green. The other one's more gray. So let's see, let's put that there and there. It's hard to tell, I know. They are different, I promise. <laughs> Maybe you can tell better from above. Uh, this is how it is though. It's the tiniest change in a glaze to get it right. Like I have a test board of glazes here. Some are my own glazes, some are ones that are from other companies. And I use that as a great reference. But, um, and then this one, this is definitely going to happen. This beautiful um, deep sea kind of green, blue, blue-green color. So that's going to happen. And that, I mean, that yellow is not going to happen. <laughs> and here's some more. But this is what I'm working on right now. Um, I've got four colors I'm aiming for. And you'll wait. In the coming weeks, you'll see more. All right, so that's the big excitement this week is doing that. Uh, I've got a new Raku clay to test, so I'll be doing that. And I just have to put things away from the photo shoot on Friday. I haven't done that yet because I need to load a bisque. 
So that's what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be bisque firing. So if you make um, test glazes, see there's my test tiles back there on that board. They all have to go in the kiln. And then this week in our prime time, we're going to make this, the demo piece I did down at the ceramic shop. Can I see it from the side? It's like, no, you can't see it. Uh, you'll see it throughout the week. And I showed it last week or the week before. So it's out there. But that's what we're going to do in the class for this week in prime time. All right. I'll be back later this week. Have a great start of your, have a great Monday if you're watching this at the beginning of the week, although it's Tuesday for me. So we made it to Wednesday in the studio. Wednesday is like my Friday uh, because we do two live broadcasts back to back and it, it's just a very busy day. So usually I take Thursday as a down day, but sometimes I work a little bit. So what's happening here? We got uh, Raku happening. We're going to be doing some Raku firing. So I made some pendants. Look at this. Oh, I'm going to teach people how to make that. Um, so that's a Raku pendant. There's some more. Look, they're drying. Layered. This is how I dry things. So it's very exciting stuff, I know. But when I make pendants that are made from slabs that I want to stay nice and flat, I layer them. Look, there's another layer in there. And I put these little boards. These are actually bats from my um, Studio Pro Bat Space Saver bat system. Say that three times fast. And I got some beads, I got some baby pots that I threw a little while ago. Uh, jewelry for bead week that's coming up. I've been talking about bead week a little bit. So that's that stuff that's happening there. Uh, other things that have been happening in the studio, you'll notice the colorants have been moved. Where did they go? Well, they're just, they're actually just hanging out over here at the glaze mixing area, just uh, chilling out. Ooh, I better turn these guys on. Sorry, plants. I'm not trying to kill you. I'm trying to keep these alive. And I'm doing actually really well. The grow light makes all the difference. And then I keep a bottle of water here to water them. So, but not a lot, right? So, so far we're, we're doing good. Uh, someone asked about this tray. Yeah, that was a class I did and it's great. I love it. It's a great tray for keeping your plants in. I also have one for my tea and coffee station and everything. They're just super handy. Here's another great use for trays. You know, I keep camera gear. Ooh, I gotta, I gotta charge that. I need to use that. Anyhow, that stuff's gonna happen, but I'm waiting for some supplies to come in that were out of stock, so that's kind of paused. Here's my microwave raccoon kiln. What? Microwave raccoon? That's next week. Uh, some teapots. Yes, emailing people. Ugh, hate emails. Anyhow, look, I uh, got the extruder out. We're gonna be doing an extruder class tonight in prime time. So I've got all my extruder parts out here and this all mount on that stand there. And it's great. I love this extruder. It's so easy to work with. And then in live at five this week, we have uh, Malin from Plum Island Transfers joining us. And she is going to be doing a demo using their stencils, which are these right here. But I used one of her decals here, look. One of these cuties. When you want to see something really funny, look. Do you see these that she sells? I just want to show you some of my drawings from my own sketchbook. Um, <laughs> not, not just saying that there's this uh, kind of interesting thing going on with, and here's some more drawings with artists that draw. Uh, from my own sketchbook. So maybe I need to do some underglaze decals of my teapots and my mugs and stuff. What do you guys think? Do you want that? Say, let me know. Give me, give me comments. Do you want me to do that? Cause I will. I didn't think people would want drawings of my pottery with flowers and stuff in them. But if you want that, I'm, I totally could do that. Cause look, here's some mugs of mine that I've drawn, AKA carved into. Uh, these would be great shapes to do drawings of and then turn them into underglaze decals. Like all these fabulous shapes. I don't know. Let me know what you think and I'll see what I can do. All right, back to the plate. So it's a slab plate. I use the Peony rim template that I designed. You can get these on Clayshare Market. And premium members of Clayshare, you guys get a discount. So I used the nine and a half inch size Peony rim template with the eight inch GR pottery form. That's that one there. 
And the great thing about this size underglaze transfer is it fits perfectly in the center. And then for the rim, I use my Wildflower Mini Roller. So this is a, it'll be smooth in the center. So those of you who don't want texture where food is, you're not gonna have texture, you just have a beautiful image. And then texture will be on the rim. So I'm super excited uh, to see how that turns out. And I've got a bunch more decals to work with. It's decal season, apparently. <laughs> And this is the picture we're going to make with the extruder. This little guy right here. He's bisque, ready to be glazed. Woo! Down in there. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so decal season, right? I've got these from Plum Island Transfers. I just got ones a couple weeks ago, you might remember, from Sam Ceramica Transfer. And then look what just came today! <gasps> For me! From... Let's see if we get the focus. There we go. Sambao Studios. That's that's the studio dress. You all can see that. Look, there's another pot. Every everywhere in my studio is drawings. Just so you know, I draw on everything, all the time. What do we got there? There's some drawings are good, some drawings are rubbish. But uh, you can't get the good drawings if you don't make the bad drawings. I just want to put that out there for those of you who are afraid to draw because you don't think they're going to be any good. Well, guess what? They won't be. That's okay. Because you've got to make those bad drawings to get to the good drawings. That might be the takeaway of the day. Go make bad drawings so that I take notes. I take everything in here. Um, ooh, what was that? Ooh, I want to see that. So make those bad drawings. Let's go over there. Oh. So, and I keep these notebooks around to leaf through once in a while because I forget. You know, I have so many ideas in my head. If I don't draw it or write it down, it's gone. It's just gone. Anyhow, uh, make those bad drawings so that you can get those good drawings out. I'll leave you with the teapots. Friday in the studio. Dun, dun, dun. I got to unload the bisque from the baby kiln. So this was a bunch of pieces I made with my steel pottery extruder and I disfired them, obviously. <laughs> and I gotta get these out of here because what I have going instead, put these over here, is all of these pieces that I think I already showed, the Raku pieces I showed, that I've gotta put in there so I can do some Raku. It's very exciting. So that's, that's what's happening this morning. I'm gonna get that done right now and then I'm gonna load it right back up and start it again. And I will probably have an unboxing. I got a couple packages and I have some things I wanna share. I also gotta do some straightening up. I've got a lot of pots, as you can see, in the studio. I've got stuff, I haven't really put it away. The studio's kinda of messy. But you know what, that's normal. I think a lot of people see these really clean studios and they think, oh, wow, you know, that's pottery life. You keep your studio really clean. And you should keep it clean from dirt and clay and dust and that. But, I mean, look, this is reality. I've got some shipments that came in. So I've got boxes. I had my puppies. Well, they're not babies, but I had the dogs over here. So I've got dog bed stuff i got to clean up. You know, I've got stuff from broadcast that are out. I took my apron off a little while ago. I just left it here. So it, it needs, it's constant. You constantly have to pick up. But here's the plate I made. Let's just look at this beautiful thing. It's almost dry. It's not ready to go in the bisque today. Um, probably Sunday, two more days that can go in a bisque. So that's real life studio. And that's what it's all about. Keeping it real here and, and what actually happens. The only thing you don't get to know about is the music I play because it's copyrighted and YouTube and Clayshare would get in trouble. So you don't get to hear music, but everything else you get. All right, let's load this up. So it's Sunday. I don't think I filmed on Saturday, but it's Sunday and I have a massive unboxing haul to do. I thought we'd do this today because I got a lot of stuff to get done this next week and I just want to get all the stuff unpacked so you can see what I have here. So let's go ahead and do this unboxing. Look at all the boxes I've got. Where should we start? Um, I don't know. There's so many things that I have here that I got. <laughs> Where should we start? Uh, let's start down here actually. This one. The most beat up of them all. 
I was a little concerned this came and you can see the packaging is a little, I don't know. We're gonna get into it and see if everything's okay. I have the uh, knock on wood, not had any issues. Wow, look at what it makes my arms look like when you do it this way. That's so weird. I haven't had any issues with glazes being broken during shipping yet. So, and I've, you know, years haven't had any issues. Let's see what we got. I've got some Spectrum Floating uh, Glaze. It's the Pearl White. Ooh, and another Pearl White. What is this? Another Pearl White. <laughs> How about this? Oh, Autumn Purple. And this Pearl White. I needed a lot of Pearl White. I was completely out. So that's what that was. Four pints of Pearl White and one of Autumn Purple. If you don't know what Pearl White is, let me give you a little uh, looky loo. This is Pearl White. Isn't that beautiful? It's so pretty. Very simple white on white. I love it. It's great. One of my favorites that Spectrum has. So there's that. Uh, let's do this one next. This is from Sheffield Pottery. And as many of you know, or I've been talking about making glazes, I needed some colorants. So that's what this is. This is a whole bag of colorants. Someone wanna guess in the comments how much these five tiny packages cost? Cause it's, it's a lot. But it's worth it. You need to have them. So these are some colorants that I'm going to be playing with and doing some test tiles with. So that's exciting, right? I, I, for me, it's exciting. Okay, let's see this little guy. This is because we're doing Raku Week. And I ordered some things from Amazon. And I have to tell you, yeah, it's smaller than I thought. Okay, so even if you read descriptions... Look at this tiny trash can. I was ordering a can for doing Raku. <laughs> do you think I'm gonna try to zoom? Uh, do you think that's gonna work? Look. <laughs> it's so small. I mean, we are doing microwave Raku, at, but seriously, this is so tiny. I got a couple of them. They weren't super cheap either. I think they were $13 a piece. So I thought they were bigger. They are all metal, so I'm gonna use it. I'm absolutely gonna use it. I paid for it. I'm using it. All right, we'll come back to that later. Uh, let's make room. Oh, okay, we'll do this one. Oh, this long, skinny one. How are we gonna open this? I guess we'll just, this is the heavier end. I'll open at this end. Let me move my little trash can out of the way. Oh my gosh, isn't that funny? So this is from Clayscapes Pottery. I'm not sure how this is sealed up. I guess it's all at the top here. One of my members sent me this ceramic cutter because I used, <laughs> used to do these unboxings with a traditional box cutter and I would get so many messages from people that were concerned for my safety because they they were afraid with the way that I open boxes that I was going to get hurt. <laughs> so she sent me that. Ooh. We gotta, I think we're going to zoom out a little bit. Get that for you. Can you see what's in there? Woo, here they come. Here they are. You know what those are, don't you? Ooh, wait. But wait, there's more. A second pair. Because it's always best to do Raku with a friend. So you need two. Two, two for Raku. So these are Raku tongs. And when we do the mini uh, microwave Raku pieces, these are too big. But when we do the bigger Raku, this is what we're going to need. And, ooh, did you know that was magnetic? That's cool. Um, I should stick that on something so I don't lose it. So these are great for doing um, bigger pieces and they have the teeth to help grab on, which I do like a lot. So raku tongs, those over here. Ooh, what else? 
else? This box is from the ceramic shop. So you know I did a tour of the ceramic shop and I was just down there a little while ago doing some demos for them. And I bought some things while I was there, but there was a few things I wanted and it was just so busy. I didn't get a chance to get back to get them. So I ordered them online and just shipped them because I knew I wasn't gonna make it back down there. It's a seven hour drive. What do we got? Um, well, I got Raku Glaze. This is the Copper Penny from Mako. I have all the other of the Raku glazes that Mako makes except this one. So I thought, why not get the last one? I have them all, I can test them all, and we can do that this week. So this is Copper Penny Glaze from Mako. Then I got the Baby Anvil I forgot to pick up. I love this little guy. Isn't this cute? Great for doing pressed dishes or for, for doing um, hand building some pieces, shaping. And then these are some old school traditional texture tools that we used to have some ages ago, but I don't know what happened to them. So I, I got some more. This is for rolling texture into your pieces. And it's just this really nice crisscross rope texture. Really like this. Um, it's great for wheel thrown or hand built pots. So this one right here. And then this is a double sided paddle so that you can paddle your pots. It's actually called a paddle. So you know, easy to find, but it has this diamond shape pattern on one side and a diamond on the other. Sometimes I will take paddles that I make myself and I'll wrap rope around it and then you have a rope paddle. Those are a great texture tool. Kind of along the lines of this here. That one just gave me a splinter. Ow. This handle gave me a splinter. I'll have to sand it down. Ouch. Okay. Uh, one last package. And this is great that I'm getting this done today because tomorrow I start getting everything ready for Raku. So we'll get a new week. It's going to be a Raku week for us here at Clayshare. So these are from my dear friends at Sam Bao Studios. It's their summer transfer patterns. And as many of you know, I have my own designs of underglaze transfers that I work with them and they sell them. And I don't know, I thought about actually getting more into the designing of um, underglaze transfers and then selling them directly from Clayshare to you all. I don't know, what do you think? I've got <laughs> hundreds if not thousands of drawings I've done over the years that I could turn into underglaze decals and transfers. If you all think you want them, if you're interested, I could probably make that happen something we've been discussing here. So these are their summer patterns. Oh, I love this. Isn't this the sweetest? And you know, all right, back to the decals before we were so rudely interrupted by an alarm I set to remind myself that I needed to go trim some pots in case I got busy today and forgot about it. And I'm in the studio and the alarm just went off. So after I get done this, apparently I'm trimming pots. Anyhow, these are the summer decals and I, from Sambao. And I was talking about how these ones have the color added already. Although I do love the ones that are just the black outline where you can add your own color. That's really nice. That way you can tailor it to your own color palette. But again, sometimes it's nice to have a one and done, right? So there's this color. Way. I'm not sure what that's called. Uh, go check out their website and see. Oh, this is very fun. A nice floral. Kind of got a folk art pattern thing going on with this. Oh, can never, never go wrong with the Monstera leaves. I love the Monstera. This would be great as a nice big tray. Maybe like a, a, a spherical rectangle, I'm thinking. Something like that. This would be great. With a dark green glaze on your border. Can you see that? I can see like put down on a white white clay with this beautiful green leaf design and then the border should be a either dark green or dark brown would be really pretty with this too. So we'll see, um, I'll do that. That's what I'll do with that one. And then this one, so he only sent me uh, four designs. This is like a juicy summer fruit pattern. This would be fun if you want to make some summer tumblers, right? Something that you can use for summertime. So that's the unboxings, all of the things that I have 
uh, and I tell you, there's a lot of stuff. Now my whole table's covered in things. I'm gonna have to go clean them up. But yeah, check out Sambal's underglaze transfers. We also work with Plum Island, uh, Plum Island transfers and Ceramica. They have some great ones too. So, so many options for your, for your transfers. Let's go ahead. You wanna come out with me here? I'll see if I can take you off here without hanging up the camera. Ooh, hold on. You ready? We're gonna go for a walk together and turn you around. All right, so there's what's left of the table. The glazes, the stuff, that giant, giant can. My extruder. Hey, extruder. Wanna go outside? We'll go out for a minute. I've got stuff moved around. I don't know if I've been out since I moved things to share with you. And you can also see Vermont on the summer. Well, technically not summer. It's still spring uh, afternoon. I'll give you a really wide angle. The birds are really happy. There's my garden that badly needs to be weeded. All my flowers, my peonies are just about past. Ooh, here we go. Oh yeah, they're done. Bummer. I didn't even really get to appreciate them. I was so busy. Got some daylilies coming. Those will be ready really, really soon. Anyhow, let me show you what's happening over here and then we'll end it for the week. So I'm gonna be doing microwave raku tomorrow. Tomorrow, not till Monday. Uh, so here's the kiln. Hello. Actually, it's a microwave. <laughs> but it's for a little tiny, uh, made out of refractory, refractory cement. So you can have a little, uh, uh, you can pretend it's a kiln. So anyhow, that's the position for the microwave raku. And then that little tiny can, I'll have them out here. Actually, I think I'm gonna put them down over here and pull it to here. It'll be completely outside so we won't get any of the smoke inside. Also got my, uh, this morning went down and got my old Econo kiln. Look at this. Oh my gosh, this kiln is like 52 or three years old. It is old. It's so old, but it's pretty amazing. And I had to rebuild this kiln sitter about 15 years ago. It overfired, melted. I had a huge mess, oh my gosh. I made sculpture, I tell you. There's the inside. But I'm gonna turn this into a raku kiln, but it's gonna be hooked up to electrics. So the cord, my electrician's gonna come. Here's the rest of the cord. Um, and finish doing the outlet for me, probably this week, because we're gonna be doing electric kiln raku next week. This week's microwave raku. And I'm gonna take one of the rings off. The great thing about this kiln is when I got it, it was only these top two sections like that. And then I added this bottom section on to make it three sections tall, which is really wonderful that I have that option. But what I really wanna do now is just have two sections. And it would be silly to keep this middle one since it's old, right? So I'm gonna pull that one out and store it. And then I'll just use this bottom one, which I got back in 2005. So what, that's 19 years ago, I got this section here and uh, we'll put that in storage and I'll use the top. So I'm gonna use the 19 year old section and the 53, a 19 and a 53 year old. That's not legal. <laughs> All right, uh, what else? The storage of dry materials, I gotta move those somewhere. And this is my clay mixer, my Soldner that has made many tons of clay I used to mix every week two batches, 150 pounds at a time. So 300 pounds of clay every week I would mix by hand in that mixer while you put the dry, like dry materials there. You put it in there and you mix it. And then guess what? I didn't have a pug mill. I had to pug it myself. Uh, you want to see inside my gas kiln? I mean, that's very exciting stuff here. I built this gas kiln myself. Thank you. I actually locked myself in the kiln when I was building it. Is that a story for another day? It might be. Uh, yeah. So this is a 16 cubic foot gas kiln. And when I was doing uh, production pottery, I could fill this up in a week. I would throw 
enough pots to fill it up. It's a two foot by two foot setting space down here with four feet tall. But here's the fun thing is when you build this arch, when I built this arch, in order to put the arch in, you actually have to be inside the kiln. You have to shut the door, this big giant door and latch it. And then you reach up here over, you know, you reach over and you latch it and then you do your bricking. And once you brick it up, your arms don't reach out here to undo the latch. So you're now stuck in your kiln and there's no way you can jump up out of it. You're like, cause the ceiling, you do this part after. The ceiling gets done after the arch. Oh yeah. Anyhow, that good times. Shut yourself in your kiln. Uh, and this was before cell phones. So luckily I had a cordless phone like on my waist, like one of those big, huge brick things. And I was able to get help, but um, that was fun. Okay, so lots of cool stuff coming this next week. Microwave Raku. And uh, soon the electric kiln will be used for Raku. Lots of, lots of fun things. So I hope you all had a great week. Thanks for hanging out here with me again with the vlog. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, Monday, probably, uh, I don't know when, sometime. I'm going to do some tests, but I'm going to take you up. There's some grumpy birds. Let's go up and see what's happening up the hill. But I'll be back tomorrow and share some more of studio, studio life, Vermont studio life right? There it is. All right, guys. Thanks for being here with me this week. See you Monday.